Django 3 New Features, Section 6. In this section, we're going to look at some of the new features in Django 3.0. And then we'll be creating a really simple Django 3 ASCII application. We'll also create custom enumeration types for few choices for the data model. And finally, we'll do an upgrade and resolve any incompatibility issues. So what's new in Django 3? Well, let's find out. Currently under development, Django 3 boasts a couple of major changes and numerous minor changes. But again, just like any framework, there are some backwards compatible changes and then some features will become obsolete and eventually will fade out. We'll have a look at some of the features that are no longer supported in Django 3.0. So here are some of the major features in Django 3.0. Django 3 is planned to be fully async capable to run ASCII applications. This is perhaps the major reason why 3.0 is released and not a minor, like a 2.3 or something like that. If you are familiar with the WSGI and ASCII applications, you know that going from WSGI to ASCII is quite significant. So way to go, Django. Pretty good. The next new feature is that because of this new enhancement to ASCII, they are going to only support Python version 3.6 or higher. And you may ask why? Well, if you go back to a couple years ago in 2014, Python, they have this new package called the async IO that allows developers to write concurrent code using the async and await syntax to, you know, resolve like WebSockets and support the HTTP2 protocol and things like that. So uh, since that version has evolved quite rapidly, and it's likely that some of the older patterns are becoming obsolete. So therefore, it just makes perfect sense to support the latest release of Python, which is 3.6 and higher. So another major change is that Django 3 now officially supports MariaDB 10.1 and higher. And, you know, well, MariaDB and MySQL are very similar in many ways uh, since MariaDB is really just a spin-off version of MySQL. However, there are some important differences between the two. Things like JSON data types, encryption, thread pools, and etc. And unless you are doing some really heavy enterprise level development, you're not going to notice any of the differences at all. So now the next feature is that it will create a new class called the exclusion constraint class. And this class will create an exclusion constraint to support additional data integrity constraints in the PostgreSQL database system. So an exclusion constraint is very similar to the check constraint except that it checks two rows in the table instead of just one row. And last but not least, this is a really interesting one as well. Now you have the ability to define three custom enumeration types, tech integer choices, and choices. So let's take a look at some minor features. These are quite a lot, so I'm not going to go through all of them, but I'll list here some of the major ones. These are, uh, you know, enhancement to the admin site and authentication. So the GIS system has some enhancement for geolocation stuff. And sessions are now has this cookie age to be dynamically specified. File storage can also create a new file if there's already a file exists. And the management commands, these two commands, the start app template and start project template, and now support templates stored in the XZ archives. And the model section, there's a lot of, I'm not going to list them all, but things like database connections and some of the features related to the data model are all in there. And last but not least, three very important security enhancements. The X-Frame options is now going to be set to the denied instead of the same origin. If you're not familiar with this option, this just means you are able to disallow your site to be included in iframe in other sites. So you can have some security. So especially you know, for uh, click jacking, things like that. All right, so let's look at the roadmap here for a minute. This is the schedule for the release of these separate versions. And again, this is a tentative schedule only, so it's not guaranteed, but we can anticipate a final official release sometime in December 2019. So you can go to the link to see if there's any changes or just go to the djangoproject.com site to follow the status of this version.